Hello, all my Taurian friends. I hope you're doing beautifully. I have got your November forecast, so I should be able to help you uh, move through November even more beautifully. Uh, first, I want to remind those of you who are interested in studying astrology that I'm doing uh, a very special mentoring program. Uh, it's on my website, maxinetaylor.com, check it out. If you're interested in having me work with you one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, this is, uh, this is what you've always wanted, the teacher coming to you, so to speak. Um, anyhow, if you're interested in studying more for your own personal growth or becoming an astrologer, and practicing astrology, check out my mentoring program. Okay, now, Taurus. Oh, I love this. I gotta show this to you so that you can see uh, why I'm all excited. Look at this area. It's just a lot. So let's start by talking about Mercury, the blue planet, because you can see it's moving from the sixth house to the seventh house to the eighth house. Um, Mercury has been in the shadow of the retrograde and it comes out of the shadow on November 2nd. Yay, not so fast. On, let me get the date right, November 18th, Venus moves into the shadow of the retrograde. Ah, so we're gonna have a tag team, a retrograde tag team at some point in December, January, February. We'll go into that as we approach it. However, between the 2nd of November and the 18th of November, you can go ahead and start new projects. Okay, I'm suggesting that you uh, kind of start Start thinking of Venus going retrograde when it moves into the shadow because it feels like it's retrograde because <clears throat> things are perfluy. Okay. Between the time that Mercury leaves the shadow of the retrograde and Venus enters the shadow of the retrograde, go for it. So Mercury's racing forward. It starts in your sixth house of work, health, and service. And on the fifth, it moves into partnership. Uh, you're getting out of the job rut, perhaps, and into relationships, being with people. Um, and you'll enjoy it very much because uh, with Mercury no longer retrograde, it's possible that uh, if you're single, you might meet somebody. It's also possible that your relationships in general are going to be more interesting to you. In fact, they, they certainly will be. And then on the 24th, Mercury moves into your eighth house and you're looking very deeply uh, at what is going on under the table, not on top of the table, so to speak. You're dealing with secrets. You're helping other people get their values together. This is wonderful. Um, it's a terrific time to help other people do that. It's also a terrific time to rethink your own ideas. So let's move on with the sun, the yellow planet. That's the center of our life. It's the giver of life. It has been in the seventh house of relationships <clears throat> and it's gonna stay in the seventh house of relationships until the 21st when it precedes Mercury into that eighth house and wherever the sun is, that's the giver of life. And so this puts light on joint financial arrangements, uh, taxes, legacies, wills, um, any type of mutually beneficial financial arrangement or project, yay. And with Mercury no longer retrograde, that works nicely. Okay, the sun is the ego. And so you, anytime the sun is in your eighth house, your ego undergoes a transformation. 
And when it uh, when you come at, when it comes out of the eighth house and moves into the ninth, which it will next month, you're going to be changed in some way. This happens every year. I really like it uh, because it can bring out the best in you. Okay, a transformation on some level of the ego. Beautiful. Now Mars, the red planet. Okay, Mars is in Scorpio, its own sign. So you're very intense right now about your relationships. And you're attracting people who put themselves first, which is great because you're putting them first. Uh, the sun is the center of our life. And wherever Mars is, that's what comes first to us. So it's what we'll fight with or fight for. Um, so can you possibly get into arguments in um, your relationships? Possibly, um, because you'll think that other person is so, they think they're so right. But the truth is you're allowing them to be right. You're allowing them to put themselves first. So learn from that, that's all. Um, Mercury is no longer retrograde and you may find yourself taking a stand with other people a very obvious stand with other people. You rock. All right. Now let's talk about Venus, beautiful Venus. It is the lesser benefic. It rules love. It rules money. It rules beauty. It rules all things lovely. It's been in your eighth house. And so your whole concept of love has been undergoing a change and since it's money, you have been able to help other people create more money for themselves. This always pays off for us. It always pays off. On the fifth, it moves into your ninth house, your ninth solar house. This is gorgeous. And love becomes part of your philosophy, part of your belief system, uh, part of the principles by which you live your life. Are you thinking of going back to school? Are you thinking of traveling? Venus there says, do it. I will bless you, says Venus. Isn't that great? Okay, now the new moon, and that's when things start growing, is on the 4th of November. So until the 4th, energy is going to be low. We know that, okay? It's in the seventh house of relationships in 12 degrees, 40 minutes of Scorpio. Find that 12 degrees, 40 minutes of Scorpio in your birth chart, and you'll have the total picture. This is where the energy starts going, moving forward. Beautiful. Two weeks later, we have a full moon in 27 Taurus, and that's on the 19th of November. However, this is not just a full moon, it's a lunar eclipse. Usually a lunation, like a new moon or a full moon, is, it lasts two weeks. An eclipse, we feel it at least a week ahead of time, at least that. And so you're already feeling, I got to do my thing my way, aren't you? All right. This eclipse will be at its peak three to four months from now and will last until the next pair of eclipses come along, which will be the spring of 2022. So this is a big eclipse. In your first house, it's you saying, I'm doing what I want, when I want, how I want, because I want. I love it. I absolutely love it. So there you have November. 2021. Join me next month when, once again, I take a look at your forecast and, and bring you uh, an optimistic look at everything going on in your life. Um, and, and I'll show you how and where to work the planets, to express the planets so that it is of the utmost uh, good for you. So 
Till next month, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.